Good morning, friends. I am Sachin Ketkar from Department of English, MS University, Baroda, and I have with me my friend Dr. Anil Kapoor from uh, RH H Patel uh, Mahila College, Vijapur, Mesana, and we are going to talk about the the distinction between short story and the novel as two narrative forms, and this discussion will be very helpful for you to understand novel. and short story as form that you are studying at your undergrad level college curriculum so uh, we are going to start now and we will first uh, read out the intentions and the objectives of today's discussion and we will also simplify many of the concepts that we are going to use in our discussion so let's have a look at the first slide where we will be talking about the purpose the objective behind our discussion so let's have a look at the first slide Well, good morning, Sachin. Good morning. Uh, anything should start with an objective, mm -hmm. and uh, the first thing is that the students at the undergraduate level should be aware of the different genres that they are studying, and uh, short story and novel being two genres that uh, use narrative form are many a times misunderstood because both use story as a basic, uh, let's say, ingredient in it. and so uh, today as uh, we'll we'll be discussing uh, the students will come to know more about what a short story is they'll come to know what a novel is they'll again come to know as to what are the characteristics that define and distinguish these two literary genres and at the same time they'll also know about various writers and the works that have contributed to the development of both these forms yeah so the objectives of the presentations are you will be able to better understand the notions of genre narrative fiction the short story and the novel you will be able to tell the similarity and difference between a short story and a novel and you will be able to learn about important writers and texts in the course of this discussion so let's have a look at the next slide where we'll start looking at these two forms in a greater detail so let's have a look at the next slide the novel and the short story are two most popular literary genres the word genre or genre comes from the french originally latin word for kind or class the term widely used in rhetoric literary theory media theory and more recently linguistics to refer to distinctive type of a text this means that genre refers to a type of text and what is interesting is the term genre and the pronunciation of the term genre and many often it have, we have seen that students confuse how to pronounce the word genre and we have got two acceptable ways of uh, pronouncing the word genre one is genre as a british way of pronouncing and there is genre so there are american and british pronunciation of the same term and the term implies class what we can say in gujarati as a prakar of text it might the text might be a film one or it might be a the oral one or it might be a written printed one the type or prakar is what genre implies so short story and novel are two genres so let's have a, a closer look at what do we mean by narrative we have heard this word often narrative is a story that is created in a constructive format as a work of speech writing song film television video games photography or theater and it describes a sequence of fictional or non fictional event so narrative is basically a story anil oh yes or uh, we could even say it's the progression of the story as right. the story develops as the story moves uh, the other thing which becomes very important is that within a short story or a novel you have both a story and the plot Right. There's a very minor difference between the two, uh, right. but many a time students, uh, in a way, uh, get confused between the two. Right. A story tells us about the progression. That mm. is what happened next. Mm. That is, if I could give you an example, once there was a king, mm. and there was a queen. The king died, and then the queen died. Right. Now there's this progression. This is a story, but then if you're talking about a plot, you could say that once there was a king and a queen, the king died. and the queen died because of the grief of the queen uh, king's death 
which means that it gives you a reason, a cause and effect. Plot generally talks about cause and effect, whereas a story talks about a progression as to what happened next. I think this is a very, a very uh, interesting example given by E. M. Foster that you are uh, yes. telling. It's, it's uh, in his very famous theoretical work called Aspects of Novel, where he ma- distinguishes between a story and uh, plot. What do you mean by plot? So, story implies just sequence, while plot implies cause-effect relationship between two events. Let's have a look at the next slide. Fiction. The form of any narrative or informative work that deals in part or in whole with the information or events that are not factual but rather imaginary that is invented by the author. So the uh, most important part of fiction is that it is different from factual narrative or it's very different from informative narrative. So fiction implies imaginary or invented story. It's something like what we call kalpanik and it's invention of author's own imagination. And so fiction is a very important term that we should keep in mind while we look at both fictional forms, short story and the novel. So let's have a look at the next slide where we look into the forms. Fiction versus non-fiction. So fiction also refers to the theoretical, uh, cinematic and musical work. Fiction contrasts with non-fiction which deals exclusively with factual or at least actual uh, functions or facts, events, descriptions like you find in the histories or you find in the biographies. Yeah, so Anil, fictional and non-fictional distinction is very important. Fiction is kalpanic and non-fictional would include works like travelogues, biographical works, autobiographies, which are assumed to be factual. They may or may not be factual, but at the same same time, the readers as well as writers assume that this is not imaginary, but something which has really happened. So that's, uh, on the other hand, novels or short story, which are fictional, are purely imaginary. They are not, they are not actually happened and the people are not real people in the sense that you find meet them on the street. But at the same time if uh, it could be added we could say uh, that uh, even though it is a fiction it's not true but then it should be lifelike. Right. That is the reader should be able to associate the story with incidents that he sees around or that he has experienced or the characters again should look or seem to be like the characters he has known in real life or they should seem to be uh, lifelike characters so that he can associate with those incidents. Right, this the whole very uh, very idea of resemblance or uh, similarity with actual life and a fictional work, imaginary work, is often called mimesis by theorists. So mimesis is a very important aspect of fiction. Let's have a look at the next slide where we look at the term short story. The term short story tells us that it is a narrative story and that it is short. So short story means a short piece of narrative. However, short is a relative term. For example, consider uh, sentences like my brother is shorter than me, but I am shorter than my friend. So word short is a very relative term. We cannot really define what is short and it can be only understood in relation to other forms of prose narratives like novel the novella, the novelette or flash fiction and all these divisions are largely in terms of the length of it, uh, length of a narrative. Short, how short is short or how long is long is a difficult question. You cannot really pin down that this is short and this is long because it's in relation to something that we call something as long and short. And that is a real confusion for many students because they often think novel is a longer version of a short story. The distinction can be, I think, Anil, very fruitfully compared to T20, 2020 game and a test match. Two different forms of same game. Let's have a look at the next slide. The short story, the American Heritage Dictionary of English Language defines short story as a short piece of prose fiction, having few characters and aiming at unity of effect. This definition Sachin very clearly tells us that it's not always about length. Yeah. Because uh, when you're talking about a short story, the short story compresses the entire incident in such a way 
that it discusses only one plot or one character at a time. It does not encompass the entire social, uh, let's say, canvas at the yeah. same time that a novel can do. Yeah. And it talks about incidents or characters in a given situation and it completes the entire story in that, uh, let's say, very short span of time. Right. You could even say that a short story is should be so short that it should be it could be read in one sitting. Yeah. Uh, that could be one of the, yeah. let's say, ways that, of looking that is, at That is one of the definitions which Edgar Allan Poe, whom we are going to look at more closely in the course of our discussion, defines short story as. But very interesting thing about this discussion is the idea of unity of effect and impression. That there is some singular impression that short story conveys, unlike a novel which has, as you rightly pointed out, a wide range of uh, characters, incidents and a larger canvas that the novel has. So uh, that's a very important point that you mentioned. Let's have a look at the next slide here. Yeah. Okay, because of the shorter length, a short story usually focuses on one plot, one main character with a few additional minor characters and one central theme, whereas a novel can tackle multiple plots and themes with a variety of prominent characters. Yeah. So that's the distinction we discuss right now. Yes, and uh, such an if you, if you could uh, exemplify as to what are let's say minor characters and major characters mm -hmm. because it's going uh, to benefit the students of undergraduate. Right. Uh, so if you could tell them more about what are let's say major characters and minor characters and yeah. what is single plot and multiple plot yeah. mean. Very interesting. Actually, novels usually consist of uh, multiple plots. There is one main plot or. And there is a subplot or minor plot and the protagonist and the main characters of the main plot are the main characters and the minor plots revolve around minor characters. So a novel usually is divided into major characters and minor characters. If you consider an example like say Wuthering Heights, very famous novel by Emily Bronte, then the main characters are Catherine and Heathcliff. These are the main characters. At the same time, there is there are narrators like Nellie Dean and these are minor characters who tell the story. So there is a plot story of uh, uh, Heathcliff and Catherine and on the other hand there are other minor characters. So a novel may have multiple plots and stories and multiple characters. And again as you mentioned E.M. Foster before, E.M. Foster divides them into flat character and yeah. round character. A round character, a major character is a character. Uh, who develops with the story or right. the story develops with him right. uh, whereas the minor character is a character uh, that generally remains at the same stage from right. the beginning of the story to the very end. Right. Uh, exactly the round character as you rightly pointed out is about uh, transformation and change that occurs in uh, the main characters and flat characters would be the characters which remain untransformed throughout the uh, storyline so that's a very important thing let's look at the slide that uh, where we'll discuss the history of the short story William Boyd in a short history of short story notes the short story had always existed as an informal oral tradition but until the mass middle class literacy of the 19th century arrived in the West and the magazine and periodical market was invented to service the new reading public's desires and preferences, there had been no real publishing forum for a piece of short fiction in the 5 to 50 pages range. So William Boyd, you can say Anil, is focusing on the sociology and the anthropology of the evolution of short story and he is talking about the origins of short story and he says that er the earliest versions of short story would be the oral tradition, Kantastha Parampara like we have in Panchatantra and the folklore. Okay. These are the oral traditions that we had. But only with the rise of 19th rise of middle class literacy when people were able to read and write and they had leisure to read and write, there was this rise in periodical market. Periodicals are journals, literary journals, newspapers, etc. When they were actually uh, prominent in the culture, there, there then arose the platform for a short version of a story, printed written short story 
to emerge as a literary form so you can see that it's in 19th century that short story really arise the modern short story so you can actually contrast modern short story with the folk and oral short story ah uh, sure sachin because uh, all of us like to listen to stories and yeah. from our early childhood we have been listening to stories and uh, even our ancestors uh, from let's say a very a long time ever since they uh, started socializing and probably ever since the invention of language uh, they must have told stories to each other yeah uh but at the same time story as a literary form yeah uh, could not uh, develop as uh, uh, until the society was uh, let's say literate enough or until exactly. the society needed uh, such stories uh, to read during their leisure as right. you mentioned right. uh, so again a literary story as a form of uh, let's say art or as a form of literature mm. uh, developed because of these social needs exactly. whereas the oral tradition has been with us uh, for a very long time yeah. uh, even in uh, let's say 7th century uh, it was said that uh, uh, kadambari mm. uh, is uh, can be seen as uh, let's say a series of stories mm. or even the persian form of dastan yeah uh, exactly. may, may be seen as uh, let's say uh, sh- stories right. but then the modern short story is uh, let's say a way ahead more developed and uh, more artistic Uh, right. in a theoretical uh, sense of right. the word very true so these are very important aspects about how social changes actually impact literary forms and their origins and their transformation in the form so short story the contemporary modern short story emerged out of social changes of 19th century let's have a look at the next slide where uh, william boyd talks about the early short story in the west and he says that Uh, Walter Scott's short story The Two Drawers published in the Chronicles of the Canon Gate in 1827 is the first modern short story the emphasis on the is on the word modern short story as distinguished from the oral and the uh, uh, folk short story Scott influenced George Eliot and Thomas Hardy in Britain Balzac in France Pushkin and Turgenev in Russia and Fenimore Cooper and Hawthorne in america these writers in turn influence flaubert mopassa in france anton chekhov in russia poe and melville in america so we have an entire history of short story forms in britain russia america france and we see that this is a very popular form handled by some of the masters of fiction like uh, hardy elliot balzac pushkin Hawthorne, Flaubert, Maupassa, and of course Anton Chekhov, who is one of the most influential short story writers ever, probably. So let's have a look at the next slide, where we see the picture of Anton Chekhov, a Russian short story writer, playwright, and physician, and is considered to be one of the greatest short story writers in the history of world literature. Anil, I am reminded of a very famous short story that I taught at some level called The Misery. Mm-hmm. where there is this cab driver this is a horse car driver who who lost his son his son is no more he is dead and he has nobody to tell uh, about his grief and his misery so he tries to strike up a conversation with his passengers mm-hmm. uh, all types of passengers and nobody is really interested in listening to his grief and his misery so at the end of the day he is so so much uh, disturbed by the whole thing that he finally tells the story to the horse the mayor so uh, so in some way chekhov's story about an individual who cannot share his grief with anyone and uh, in some way it's a story about a story oh sure this is how story emerges right when individual has nobody to share and uh, it's the loss of this community and social bonding that is uh, connected to the rise of modern novel that frank o'connor talks about when we look at him in detail so again the example that you give uh, reminds me that uh, it's the urge to narrate or it's the right. urge to say uh, that makes a writer let's say write a short story right because he has a story that wants to come out and that becomes very important right. whereas a short story is concerned right. whereas in a novel it's a more methodological sort of a thing hmm. where a writer should have more patience and should let's say make it uh, more artistic uh, f- uh, let's say uh, when he's following the form when right. he's writing about it and a novel takes let's say many a times a year two years three years whereas right. a short story let's say it flows out Hmm. because there is hmm. something inside the inner urge of right. the writer some element of spontaneity spontaneity like, uh, inner urge as as, as we may hmm. find in uh, various subjective poems as well right exactly so let's have a look at the next slide 
where we have, as we said, Edgar Allan Poe, one of the <coughs> earliest important theorists of short story as a form. And when Edgar Allan Poe read Hawthorne, Nathaniel Hawthorne, and both of them are very important American writers, and he made the first real analysis of the difference between short story and the novel. And he defines short story quite simply as a narrative, as you mentioned, Anil, that can be read at one sitting. William Boyd takes Poe's definition further by saying a true, fully functioning short story should achieve a totality of effect that makes it almost impossible to encapsulate or summarize. So the effect which short story uh, conveys is very different from the effect that a novel conveys. And it's this effect which is of very importance to us as students of literature. Because it's these two effects that we have to pay attention to. And this Edgar Allan Poe's almost classic definition of short story. Oh yes, and Edgar Allan Poe becomes very important because uh, he was the pioneer, so among the pioneers who started theorizing story, right. who started thinking as to what a story is as a literary form. And many a times uh, uh, students are told that Edgar Allan Poe is the father of modern story, uh, which is not entirely true. Entirely true. Uh, but at the same time, he was amongst the pioneers who started thinking about the short story as a literary form and right. started defining it, distinguishing exactly. it from other forms. Other forms yeah. uh, here again, a, a very important thing, as Boyd says, as you say, that uh, it in, it is encapsulate or cannot be uh, cannot be encapsulated or yeah. cannot be summarized. summarized that again tells us that it is so compressed an art <coughs> that you cannot summarize it in a line or two or you cannot summarize it in a let's say few lines as you can right. do with the novel yeah so short story is very difficult to paraphrase because the effect that it conveys is not really about the plot but it seems to be the overall impression the totality which uh, white so rightly points out so, and Edgar Allan Poe, as we all know, is also one of the earliest of uh, horror uh, and detective form, very popular formats yes. in fiction. And at the same time, he even vouched for art for art's sake. Mm. And he said that a story should be about story. Uh, if I remember one of his uh, stories, The Fall of the House of Usher, yeah. a, a very important story uh, that again tells us more about the narration, mm. how the narration moves forward. And uh, it's a story uh, that tells us about, uh, let's say, a brother and sister mm. uh, who live alone in a very big mansion. Mm. And uh, uh, the writer uh, who is invited there uh, to be with them, he spends a night with them. Uh, he's there and he sees the horror that they are going through. Uh, this mansion is in a place uh, which is uh, very far away from, removed from the society. And uh, as the story moves forward, you come to know that the entire mansion also falls. Uh, here again, uh, most important thing is that Edgar Allan Poe is writing this story about writing a story and right. not about a society that he depicts in it. Exactly. Whereas in a novel, you generally talk about the society that is around you. Uh, so in a way, you could say that Edgar Allan Poe even uh, initiated the metafiction that we see exactly. uh, today. Hmm. So let's go further. And we have this picture of Edgar Allan Poe here, who was an American author, poet and critic. Considered as part of American uh, Romantic movement, Poe was one of the earliest practitioners and theorists of uh, short story. And later on, this tradition of American theorizing of fiction was again taken further by Henry James. And his art of fiction is one of the most earliest and most important statements sure. on the subject. So let's uh, look at this distinction between short story and the novel uh, and uh, what Boyd has to say about it. Uh, Boyd says that the effect of reading a good short story is quite different from the effect of reading a good novel. The great modern short stories possess a quality of mystery and beguiling res uh, resonance, beguiling resonance about them, a complexity of uh, afterthought that cannot be pay that cannot be pinned down or analyzed. Yeah, so what Boyd seems to be saying Anil, is that the impression or the effect or the impact which the short story leaves on the reader is very difficult to capture in words or state what exactly it is. There is this quality of mystery and resonance about it and there is a complexity and, and all this is owing to the compression and concentration of a literary form as against elaboration and uh, extension of uh, narrative in the novel. So, we have two different uh, impacts that they create upon us. Again, Henry James once said that uh, a short story writer is uh, like a man uh, who has uh, two pennies or two coins. Uh, 
and uh, if he can uh, let's say do without spending the second he wouldn't do it exactly uh, so he'll be he'll be as economical as he has to be both with words and with thought right now let's look at a very important theorist of short story again an Amer irish writer who, who has almost 150 works and he is his name is frank o'connor and uh, he is known for his short stories and memoirs his most famous work is the Lonely Voice in 1963 and it, this is one of very important statements on short story as a literary form and as the title suggests Anil, it's a lonely voice. So the voice of a loner is what short story is all about. So that's what it makes it very important form. What he has to say, let's have a look. There is a there is in the short story says frank o'connor at its most characteristic purpose something that we do not find in the novel an intense awareness of human loneliness the story connor points out deals with the submerged population groups consisting of outlawed figures wandering about the fringes of society so uh, i'm reminded again of uh, anton chekhov's uh, horse car driver who is actually an isolated marginalized figure and his loneliness there is no one to share so short story is about individuals who are on the margins of the society who really don't have a voice in the matter and these are the people whose lonely voice story tries to capture and this is a very important way of looking at short story so you can compare short story with the rise of individualism in the west Oh yes, and uh, it is one of the, let's say, uh, greatest subjective forms we find in prose. Right. Whereas in verse, you have various forms which are very subjective, closer to the heart and emotion. Uh, whereas in, uh, let's say, the uh, prosaic form or in prose, uh, you find the short story that <coughs> talks about the subjectivity, the feeling or the inner urge to express oneself. Uh, when, when he says that he is a loner, uh, again, not exactly as a loner in the society, but a loner who thinks that his views cannot be told to the others, uh, just as you uh, let's say mentioned uh, the ho horse car driver, right. uh, who thinks that there is nobody to listen to my story mm. and so I should pen it down, mm. so mm. that I should write it down. Mm. And writing that story down relieves him of, let's say, that inner urge. Right. Uh, you could even compare him uh, with the, uh, let's say, uh, the uh, 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 let's say, Rhyme of the Ancient Marina. Right. Uh, whereas the Ancient Marina has this inner urge to narrate his story and there's no one to, let's say, hear that story. Exactly. Once you find someone to listen to that story, uh, you are, let's say, out of that imprisonment. Exactly. Out of yourself. So that inner urge is very important and a short story writer, very subjectively, uh, let's say, describes that inner urge. Uh, with uh, using the compressed form in prose, that is the short story. So what is interesting Anil here is that earlier oral traditions and oral narratives, they had somebody who ha who could listen to the stories. There were listener, there was an audience. So there were people in this face to face kind of social setup. Amne samne, where a person can tell a story and somebody was there to listen to him. So what happened with the rise of uh, industrialism and modernity is the collapse of this face to face communities. And uh, short story is about in some way collapse of this face to face community and so it's very different according to O'Connor from the oral narrative poems. Oh yes and uh, as you said there are sociological reasons that are more important mm. uh, for the development of the short story right. uh, because just as a writer wants to communicate the even the reader wants to imbibe and communicate his feelings right. and he may not find in that disintegrating society duri uh, during during mm -hmm. industrialization mm -hmm. he may not find people uh, who will give him let's say lend him uh, let's say a patient ear to listen and uh, that is why he finds in that short story his own expressions or his or her own views expressed and that is why the short story became again a very important let's say form of uh, literature that developed very fast because short story could be read in a short span of time every week in those journals or in those newspapers every day you could find different short stories and you could find people who could relate to them in a very short span of time whereas if you're reading a novel uh, you'd need to devote more time hmm. to reading a novel and to understanding that novel right. whereas right. a short story does not require understanding to that extent hmm. because it is let's say the imbibing of the short story, the total <coughs> effect of the short story which becomes exactly. more important. Mm -hmm. And so the short story affects directly 
to the subjective reader and more to right. the subjective let's say writer right and i think a very interesting example can be found in the indian context uh, where you can actually see how frank o'connor's argument stands valid he is the story of kabuliwala by rabindranath tagore where kabuliwala is of a dry fruit seller a marginal fringe figure on the society and his relation with uh, the girl of a very respectable family a small girl whom he f- gives uh, dry fruits every time he meets and then one fine day he is actually thrown out yeah. and his loneliness and his agony and his I- inability to relate to that grown up girl at the time of her marriage yeah. is something what uh, frank o'connor's means by the lonely voice oh yes sure let's have a, a very good example yeah good yeah One of the most important aspect of the short story as a genre according to Frank O'Connor is its focus on the individual and his or her loneliness and social marginality is what we talked about Kabuliwala and the uh, horse cart driver Lo- Connor also notes the modern short story begins and continues to function as a private art intended to satisfy the standards of the individual solitary and critical reader The novel on the other hand emphasizes the process of identification between reader and the character according to Ode, a Frank O'Connor. A so very good definition. Let's now look at the novel as a form and let us compare a novel with the short story again. The novel in Gujarati we call it novel katha is an extended prose fictional narrative of around 50000 words or more. which arose in the late 17th and early 18th century and overtook verse narratives narratives are the stories told in a poetic verse format in popularity and eventually replaced them its roots go back to medieval and early modern romance and the tradition of the novella the latter supplied the present genre term in the late 18th century so word novel comes from novella in italian and here you know you can see that very interestingly uh, prose narrative prose fiction replaced the verse narrative which was oral and thus it emerged as a new form and the older forms became more marginal so you can see uh, how as society changes literary forms are also transformed oh yes uh, they have to adapt to the changes yeah. and a uh, novel is one of the forms which has very uh, let's say uh, nicely adapted to the changing forms and right. that is why today you have more number of novels written as compared to uh, let's say the drama or poems or other genres that we talked about earlier yeah so let's look at this more closely okay. let's look at the term romance that we mentioned in the earlier slide and word romance is liable to create a misunderstanding among students who associate it only with love affair or something like that but the romance is a technical term to dis- describe a medieval narrative genre and it is precursor of the novel written at first in verse as in the works of Shelley and de Troyes and later in prose uh, uh, Mallory's La Morte de Arthur The romances were popular in the aristocratic rich upper class circle of high medieval and early Europe. They were fantastic stories about marvel filled adventures often of a knight errant portrayed as having heroic quality who goes on a quest. So they were also called chivalric romances. Now chivalry implies a certain institution in medieval medieval Europe where uh, you find the stories of knights or the sardars the knights and how and adventures of those knights against various demons and enemies and so on so romances o- o- often dealt with uh, stories of knights and uh, very uh, improbable and romantic and uh, fantastic stories that romances told so novel replaced this form of romance so let's have a look how it did the term novel in most of the european languages is roman which suggests closeness to medieval roman so in many european languages novel is called roman the english name however is derived from italian novella meaning a li- little new thing romances and novels short stories short tales in prose were predecessors of the novel as were the picaresque narrative so anil let's look at this picaresque narrative which emerged out of the collapse of uh, romance how romance became less and less popular and picaresque replaced that so let's have a look at uh, what is meant by picaresque 
just a moment before that, if I, if I could say, Sajjan, if we could take it back, uh, let's say, to uh, be, even before the medieval times. Mm. In, in the ancient, ancient times, you have uh, mythological characters okay. uh, who, let's say, perform all these adventures, who, let's say, uh, move on, on, on these adventurous errands. Uh, later on in the 13th, 14th, 15th centuries in the Middle Ages, uh, you find them replaced by the knights. Right. And their errantries, hmm. hmm. uh, but then they were expressed in, let's say, poetry. Right. Whereas in, uh, let's say, 18th century onwards, uh, when the novel replaces it, and uh, even the, uh, let's say, Picarist novel or the Picar uh, replaces it, hmm. uh, you find that uh, human beings or uh, human characters hmm. uh, replace those mythological gods, which were replaced by, uh, let's say, the knights, were replaced by these rogues. Right. Again, these rogues rogue character was a character which, uh, let's say, went on different errands, uh, went on, let's say, adventures from one place to the other. Right. And uh, at the same time, it's the story of their adventures and with their adventure, the story moves forward. Right. And Picaresk uh, word comes from uh, the, let's look at the slide, the Picaresk novel. The Picaro is Spanish word for rogue and the typical Picaresk story is of the escapades of a rascal as you rightly pointed out who lives by his wits so what we have here is that knights being replaced by rascals and this shift actually indicates the outlook which has changed from anthropocentric more idealized uh, worldview of renaissance that you have to more human more uh, realistic way of looking at life and that's why rascal becomes the central character replacing the knight so that the whole uh, outlook towards life seems to have changed and how this shift in outlook has given rise to new literary form. The development of the realistic novel owes much to the such works which were writ written to deflate romantic or idealized fictional form. So fictional forms which dealt with romance, the idealization of bravery of knights and their glory and uh, their great adventures and heroism were replaced by people who were actually rascals or non-heroic or anti-heroic and we have at this juncture a very important novel Anil uh, by Cervantes that we are going to discuss now. Oh, so yes. let's l have a look at the next slide where we look at a very important picaresque novel called Don Quixote. Cervantes who wrote Don Quixote is the story of engaging madman who tries to live by the ideals of chivalric romance, explores the role of illusion and reality in life and was one of the single most important progenitors of modern novel. Don Quixote's story is one of the very important precursors to modern novel because in some way it is a novel as you said about the novel and oh, yes. how he the main character is actually addicted to reading chivalric romances and he feels that he is also a knight while he is just a commoner and the whole chivalry institution of chivalry is no more. So, he is actually anachronistic, he lives out of his times, he feels that uh, there are still adventures waiting for him and there is still this chivalry waiting for him. So, Don Quixote goes out uh, for his adventures or misadventures and very interesting misadventure is when he thinks that the windmill is actually a demon and so he tries to actually kill the windmill and uh, so this give rise to the phrase called tilting at the windmills where you fight the imaginary demon so modern man unlike the pre-modern man is fighting imaginary demons all the time and this is what Don Quixote's misadventures uh, seems to point out again very important thing in this novel uh, Sachin could be that uh, uh, the protagonist uh, comes uh, in a way comes out of the novel and becomes the character himself yeah. or tries to imagine that he is the character right. and he probably becomes the knight or the let's say person who goes on these misadventures as you say right. uh, but the entire edifice of the novel again falls just as you find in modern novels mm. where the entire edifice of the novel towards the end many a times falls on itself here again towards the end he says that nobody will read any more novels now hmm, hmm, uh, the hmm. uh, novel here ends with that uh, sort of a suggestion right. uh, where he says that now i won't be reading any novel now because that novel makes the reader identify with the protagonist to such an extent that he may go on to those misadventures okay. uh, which uh, here it very clearly let's say points out whereas in the short story 
as you had earlier said it's more about the total impression or the total impact and okay. it's not it's less about identifying with the character it's more about identifying with the incidents more about identifying with the story and its progression exactly. uh, that's the main difference between the two right very right so let's go move further and let's look at the history of novel in a uh, closer detail the novel is often said to have emerged with the appearance of Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe in 1719 and Moll Flanders in 1722 the first novel of character or psychological novel is Samuel Richardson's no- Pamela 1740 to 41 an epistolary novel a novel in which the story is conveyed entirely by the exchange of letters it's a very popular device that you find in so many novels uh, a letter is seen to advance the story it is a work characterized by the careful plotting of emotional states another such important work is richardson's masterpiece clarissa what you see anil is that adventures seem to have moved inside it's no longer the night's adventures in the world out there but what is going on in here seems to be the focus of what is known as psychological novel or the novel of character as it's said and the term epistolary also is a very important term for the students of literature because uh, as a term it's often asked in exam what is epistolary novel where the novel is actually using letter letter as a kind of device to advance the plot again as you said uh, very rightly that uh, here the let's say action moves from the physical action to the psychological action right uh, whereas uh, it's not an errand in the outside world it's more of an errand inward exactly uh, psychologically what uh, let's say character thinks another thing that the students might find very interesting mm. uh, maybe that uh, samuel richardson owned a printing press mm. and uh, he wanted to let's say uh, tell his audience or the people in england as to uh, how they should write good letters mm. Mm. this was the time when uh, let's say the mail service had started the postal service had started and uh, uh, in england and uh, he actually wanted to tell them or write a book about how to write good letters hmm, hmm. he started with that and then he thought that he would need some characters who will be writing letters to some other character and as it developed it became the first english novel or the first english psychological novel right. and uh, many people even say that uh, uh, samuel richardson is the father of uh, english novel right. in that sense right. uh, but again students should see that uh, the psychological novel started with samuel richardson right. but even before him there have been let's say books or works that come very close to the definition of the novel, novel. yes we saw daniel defoe and uh, robinson crusoe we can also think of pilgrim's progress by john bunyan oh yes or you can also think of gulliver's travels by uh, jonathan swift as early precursors of the novel so let's move ahead and let's look at a very important theorist of novel and whom we are going to contrast with frank o'connor's discussion that we had about the lonely voice yes. and this theorist is the russian theorist and a philosopher known mikhail bakhtin and what he has to say about the novel mikhail bakhtin 1895 to 1975 was a russian philosopher literary critic and scholar who worked on literary theory ethics and philosophy of language so this is the picture of very important theorist of novel called mikhail bakhtin So let's have a look what he has to say about the novel. In epic and novel, Bakhtin points out the novel's distinct nature by contrasting it with the epic. He shows that the novel is well suited to the post-industrial civilization in which we live because it flourishes on diversity. It is the same diversity that the epic attempts to eliminate from the world. A very uh, let's say important definition yeah. which tells us about the methodology that the two different forms use hmm. if you look at the epic the epic looks at the world in a more uniform sort of a hmm. way hmm. Hmm. whereas uh, in an epic it's generally let's say the conflict between the good and the bad and yeah. you could be either with the good or the bad hmm. uh, there hmm. is no gray area or patch that hmm. uh, let's say you have it is either you are white or black they yeah. can they can be anything gray yeah. whereas when you're talking about the novel uh, the novel is multi dimensional in that way right. and it gives a leg room to let's say various views or various sorts of people within the society it does not only talk about two types of people or two types of ideologies that is the good or the bad which you find in most of the epics right so very interestingly anil is here uh, bakhtin is comparing novel with epic 
both of these are narrative forms of extended length epic often relies on words and novel often relies on prose though it's not necessary that novel is always in prose you have exceptions like vikram shet's novel a golden gate which is written in a sonnet form but even then the novel can be contrasted fruitfully with epic and what you find is that as you rightly pointed out that uh, epic is about synthesis of uh, black versus white right versus wrong it's the uh, uni- uniform the uh, the totalizing impact of epic while novel deals with the in between good and a bad right and the wrong so uh, it gives rise to multi dimensional perspectives and mul- multiple voices that bakhtin will discuss and that's what he means by diversity let's look at his discussion in greater detail bakhtin on the novel says that the novel as a genre is unique in that it is able to embrace ingest and devour other genres while still maintaining its status as a novel the other genres however cannot emulate the novel without damaging their own distinctive identity this is a very interesting insight novel is seen as something which eats up other forms like short story like epic like poetry like all other literary drama novel seems to consume eat ingest digest multiple forms without losing its identity because probably it has no identity but at the same time short story cannot do the same Oh yes. drama cannot do the what novel is doing so novels it uh, distinctiveness lies in its ability to eat up other forms that is what bakhtin is saying uh, the example that you gave from vikram seth as one of the examples how uh, let's say the verse form was used in uh, let's say uh, a novel as yeah. a novel so again you see that it has eaten up or taken or imbibed or let's say gulped down swallowed uh let's say the verse form or the poetry form right again so you could use poetic language in let's say a novel you yeah. could use the dialogue format in a novel novel uh but then in a drama you cannot let's say have extended narration exactly again in poetry you cannot ha- use extended let's say prose there are prose let's say uh, poems which are more prosaic if you have a poet with us here uh but then at the same time uh the dra- let's say novel has emerged and developed primarily because uh, it has let's say engulfed all the forms that have come its way exactly. and it has changed and evolved with all those forms and yeah. that is why the novel that we had at the earliest time and the novel that we have today uh, have some things in common and they are still very far apart and very different from each other right so this uh, tendency of the novel is a form to eat up other forms gobble up other forms the version as you pointed out was vikram shets but the earliest version of a uh, Po- poetic novels or novel in verse was ug uh, was uh, pushkin's yujin onen onejin that's a, it's a russian novel i don't know how to exactly pronounce it but pushkin's novel is written in a verse format so novel seems to be eating up everything that comes within its reach and uh, at the same time remain a novel so it seems to be a huge bag as somebody defined that where you can put in anything that you want to put in even uh, canterbury tales by chaucer uh can be called as uh, let's say verse narrators hmm, hmm. because they narrate a story right uh, though technically uh, they uh, w- uh, do not come very close to the novel hmm. uh, as you see it in that sense uh, but then there have been novels written uh, which can be divided into various parts right. and if you let's say uh, see the progression of all these stories and if you combine all of them compile all of them uh you have let's say various voice of the f- voices of the 14th century mm-hmm. uh that you can see in uh, chaucer's canterbury tales mm-hmm. and it's a let's say narrative in the verse format right so talking of voices that you mind point out let's see what bakhtin has to say about this and he uses the term uh, let's look at the next slide where he uses the very important term <coughs> heteroglossia uh in this slide heteroglossia means any language in bakhtin's view stratifies into many voices what do you say are multiple voices the social dialects characteristic group behavior professional jargons like that of doctor or engineer or lawyer genreic languages languages of generations and age groups like slang on the street tendentious languages languages of the authorities of various cycles and passing fashion so within a language you have many languages and this multiple language within a language is what bakhtin means by heteroglossia having many languages within a language and he is talking about diversity in language vividhya bhasha vividhya variety of language that he means this is the heterogeneous language of language what 
Bakhtin calls heteroglossia. Glossia means tongue, hetero means multiple. So within a language, you have many languages. And this is what novel seems to be uh, addressing here. So Bakhtin says the linguistic energy of the novel is in its expression of the conflict between voices through their adaptation to different, different uh, elements in the novel's discourse. This diversity of voice is the defining characteristic of novel as a genre. So novel seems to be not just eating up many forms, it's also say, about multiple forms of language, many genres of language, what Bakhtin calls speech genres. So many genres are actually uh, encompassed or devoured by the novel and that is what gives it its energy. That's what makes it multidimensional. Right. So let's now uh, at towards the end compare and contrast the novel and short story as form. As both the forms are prose narrative, the basic elements of narrative like characterization, plot, points of view and setting are common. However, comparing Bakhtin's view on novel and Frank O'Connor's and Boyd's views on the short story, we realize that difference between short story and the novel is not simply the length of the story. So short story is not a novel cut in short, nor is novel an extension of short story, but these two are two different formats and though they use the basic elements like characterization, plot, point of view, they are primarily not similar, they are different. And the overall emphasis and the focus of short story seems to be towards the individual and his or her isolation as Connor points out in the lonely voice. And the overall emphasis and the focus of the novel seems to be on the plurality and social diversity of conflicting voice, what you say is multidimensionality of society, is what novel, the energy of novel comes from. So this is a very interesting and fruitful way of uh, distinguishing these two. Let's have a look at Boyd and what he says about this distinction. As a writer and as a theorist, he says, that something occurs in writing and reading of a short story that is of another level from reading and writing a novel. The basic issue, as you, Anil, pointed out earlier, is that of compression versus expansion. We see that the ideas, the inspiration, that the will drive a novel, however succinctly expressed, have to be capable of endless augmentation and elaboration. It's There is this centrifugal element in the novel which goes away from the center and there is centripetal movement in the short story where there is a movement towards the center. Uh, in order to make it more clearer to the students, uh, we could say that a novelist keeps on adding something to exactly. the story exactly. in order to, let's say, lengthen it, mm -hmm. in order to take it, over, let's say, further. Right. Whereas a short story writer keeps on extracting those things which uh, a short story can do without. Right. So anything that is not necessary for the story uh, should not be a part of the story. Right. Whereas in a novel, a novelist can, let's say, uh, go on describing a scene or let's say nature for two pages, three pages. Hmm. Whereas, uh, let's say, a novelist does not have that leisure or that, uh, let's say, facility or that right. faculty. Right. What do you say with that two pennies? and uh, that you have in your pocket and short story writer won't spend the next one if yeah. it's possible by one and this is the picture of William Boyd a very important Scottish novelist and screenwriter whom we have discussed and <coughs> uh, what he says as essence of almost all stories is one of distillation and of reduction as you says distillation is a very important word it's not a simple question of length there are 20 pages short stories and there are far more charged and brave than 400 pages novel he says we are talking about different category of prose fiction altogether and he contrasts very fruitfully between lyric and epic as being parallel to novel and short story. I think this is a very, a very convenient parallel for students to understand that just like a lyric is different from epic, short story is different from, from novel. From the novel. So I think this discussion actually must have helped students to make this very critical discussion, uh, distinction between these various genres. And one thing that the students might have learned probably is that it's not the length that matters. It's yeah. the treatment that treatment. becomes more important. Exactly. That exactly. differentiates a short story right. from a novel. Right. So we would like to thank uh, Bizak Sandan for giving us an opportunity to be here and present, make a presentation. And we would also like to thank the students oh, yes. for listening to us so patiently. So thank you. Uh, we hope it was meaningful and helpful. Yeah, let's hope so.